All right. So this is the Hopscotch manifesto. Uh, don't confuse it with any other manifestos. It's just for uh, clickbait, right? So if you guys don't know, know me, I am Andrew Boston. I am the CTO and the co-founder of Hopscotch, right? And uh, first of all, simple question. Who present here is using Hopscotch? Okay. That is our team, so they have to use Hopscotch here. Yeah. 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 Okay, there are a couple of hands. All right. Yay. Okay. Thank you. Um, anyways, um, uh, first of all, I want to thank the Keploy guys for actually demoing Hopscotch in the last talk, <laughs> right? So I'm not going to be demoing Hopscotch here. All right. Um, okay. Not a lot of people here seem to be using Hopscotch, but these people are. So these are. These are some of the companies who are using Hopscotch. Many of them you might know, right? And basically, we are an API testing platform. And our tagline is basically, if you go to our GitHub page, is that we are an open source API testing ecosystem. Um, open source, that's a very simplified, um, simplified view of our vision. Um, more than being just open source, we actually have three major parts in our philosophy, which is kind of what we call the Hopscotch Manifesto internally. But uh, speaking about all three of them, we need a lot of time. Um, if you want, after this, we can chat about it. But to today, I just want to focus, in this 15 minutes, just focus about the mutually beneficial aspect of it. Uh, this is something which we kind of use um, to kind of decide our processes, like how we build, uh, how we build experiences for the community and how it basically helps us actually build a better product. So here is a conundrum which the Hopscotch team, especially me and Leas, uh, faces. People define us as a Postman alternative. And in a way, we do, we do too. Actually, uh, I met this guy uh, yesterday while I was waiting for Uber um, uh, after the, outside the conference. And he asked me, so my Uber was basically like, okay, it's like two minutes away. I had to walk a little bit to get to the meeting point. And he asked me, can you just uh, explain to me how it's in five seconds? And I was like, okay, I'm trapped. Okay, so you know Postman, right? Uh, we are an open source Postman alternative, right? And then I put like an asterisk and say, this is just a shortcut. Please don't uh, describe us as that for the most part. The reason for that is that definition actually always held us back because I, I couldn't actually go dig through GitHub. I had very few less time to build the slides. But a lot of issues or a lot of things our community says is, hey, I moved from, uh, I moved from Postman to Hopscotch. And also the, the funny thing is the same people say, hey, can't you make Hopscotch more like Postman? <laughs> right? It's a duality. Uh, so that's what this definition always held us back, right? Because we are kind of like the rebels, basically, you know, building stuff from the scratch, right? That's kind of uh, part of our ethos, right? And basically, yeah. Fundamentally, we are not building a postman, right? Uh, they are always going to do better than what we build, right? They have, they are a unicorn, right? And uh, they have a bunch of people, right? They even actually tried to like, you know, uh, send their lawyers to us when we were still called postwoman. So, you know, not cool guys. Yeah. But, uh, uh, but at the same time, right, uh, if we actually try to build something like postman, we end up in a situation where we are just going to build just an open source postman, you know? Everybody hates postman. It's basically like Jira at this point. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, at the end of the day, um, this is one of the things I always speak to the contributors, right? And I always tell, yes, I always tell the team, right? My team is actually really happy and always say, Andrew, you don't give us any deadlines, right? And we are, we are really thankful for that. Uh, to be honest, our platform is a little bit complicated for a front end up, but uh, yeah. And the reason is we want to do things right, right? I tell my team, right, they submit their PRs. Basically, we still go for the GitHub flow even internally. And um, it's basically like a Gordon Ramsay Kitchen Nightmares episode. Uh, sorry, the Master Chef, whatever. And we, we like, okay, here are 200 reasons why this PR is not going to be merged, right? And I give them this big ass review, and they basically go through it. And it usually takes months, right? And uh, yeah, sorry about that, guys. 
this is how it should be right so doing things right takes time we have the luxury for it for now um my team also reminds me that andrew this is not going to be forever but for now we do and this is one of the main things we do want to encourage adoption we want to kind of cover the use cases right postman actually is a really complex really thought out app built over time we want to slowly grab pieces uh, so really do the same things but do it in a correct way right and correct way takes time it takes a lot of research it takes a lot of learning it takes a lot of trial and error and so this is where this is this was one of the main things which we learned in the community right transparent and civil debates never happens usually and you know, everyone gets into flame wars but it is the most important thing in building and experimenting and learning right build a lot of active the active part i put it in brackets but it actually should be like bolded and made, put like font 300 or something active communication channels right um we actually had this incident um i think um three four months back where one of our community members um he actually uh, opened an issue uh, regarding something in microsoft edge um on a sunday right and i was out and about and this this dude actually just opened up the issue and was like hey uh, my house it doesn't work on microsoft edge and i was like okay so i was on my phone right i have termux on my phone i just opened a vim and i basically did all the things on my phone and i pushed an update and so it got patched in like 3 hours right on a sunday right i was actually out and about and uh, the awesome thing with that is because we were really active in communicating with the person the person actually didn't even you know go to like sleep and by then we actually pushed a fix the i don't have the post with me right now but they would even like mentioned us like in linkedin and said like oh my god these guys are awesome right that kind of experiences are really helpful in building an open source community right um along with that one side note uh, which i kind of say is to make sure you pay attention to the representation and make up of a community this is something which people kind of uh, forget especially when they get feedback right there's a con there's a psychological concept called the survivorship bias it's basically the people who report bugs to you are people who actually thought it was uh, worthwhile to do it so if people failed really early you are not going to get it if people uh, people hate you for example you are not going to get it right so sir, please make sure you are when you are actually uh, getting information from your community when you are inferring things to make sure that the survivorship bias is actually counted for it's actually a major factor not just not just survivorship bias there are more factors but this is one major thing now this is just for the philosophy but there are actually a lot more things this is just the first uh, first fork uh, i want to talk more maybe hopefully next year All right so next we'll just get into some news about housecoach uh, which i think a lot of people are waiting for a lot of people was asking me hey, hey andrew what are you doing about housecoach next so for some news you know that's bragging a little bit uh we crossed 45000 stars in github last week <laughs> just last week right uh, i wanted to bring this topic up uh, last uh, la during june we had experienced a little bit slowdown in stars i was like really scared it was like yes can we make it apparently we did last week <laughs> right along with that we uh, most of you might know about housecoach for teams which is our collaboration platform it is currently closed but we are working on open sourcing it um that's going to be another slide but before that we launched housecoach for teams uh, last november and we have crossed 5000 teams worldwide uh, with the adoption 40000 collections created and 200000 plus requests stored in our systems and okay. this are some some of the companies who are actually actively using teams and okay. just a few not all right our next major engineering goal is to be able to spin up a self hostable instance of hopscotch top to bottom along with collaboration features and our back end team and our front end team is in is in full swing especially after learning after the learnings from the conference to actually uh, make this possible hopefully by the end of the year hence the asterisk because it's engineering you can never expect what happens yeah um two slides 
uh, work has started towards building a native desk, uh, hopscotch app, right? This is a, one of the biggest feature requests. We are not building Electron, by the way. Uh, our startup times are measured in seconds. <laughs> but again, it takes time, right? It's really early. I don't expect it to come this year itself, maybe next year. The Hopscotch CLI, which is our CI runner, you can think of it like basically an alternative to Newman. Please don't do that. But uh, it's released as a public alpha. Uh, it's going to be graduating to 1.0 next month. Uh, we are working on resources for it. Basically, that's why it's taking a lot of time. Uh, but it will be graduated to 1.0 next month. So Hopscotch, we are adding one more thing to our ecosystem. Uh, we are working on a scripting API. Uh, that's an RFC. I hope uh, everyone just participates on that. Uh, it's basically to improve your scripting experience. Kind of goes with the 1.0 of this. That is going to roll out next year early. So this is just some of the stuff we are working on. Uh, for more updates, follow either Leah's or me. I'm not a big Twitter guy. Uh, or at hopscotch, slash, uh, hopscotch underscore IO on Twitter for more updates. Along with that, we are hiring. So we are hiring for literally everything. right? Just go to the link and see if that is open. Uh, give me a resume right? and go through my gauntlet. Uh, even, hopefully, you will make it through. And, be fun. And that's about it. And I want to dedicate, uh, since this is the first conference, I want to dedicate uh, this talk and everything to our open source community. These are just a few of our contributors. We want to thank, we want to thank them for their effort on Hopscotch. Some of them are actually here in the conference. Some of them are actually in the audience. Right. Uh, thanks, guys. Yeah, that's about it. I will be taking questions. Hey, thanks for that awesome talk. You guys sound like a really cool team. Uh, but I have a question on what is your strategy on sort of handling sort of new contributors on GitHub, right? So I've personally managed a couple of projects, but then you'll, you'll occasionally see a person coming in and submitting a pull request that's like totally out of, out of context and totally out of, uh, out of uh, you know, what you stand for, how your code quality works. But so how do you manage that sort of... Uh, contention in the community of like the community wants a certain thing from uh, from from the from that product but you as an internal uh, internal company want a certain thing yeah. from it so how do you sort of manage that contention at, it's at hopscotch it's a difficult question actually uh, i and leos actually have debates basically da daily about how to take this through my uh, as a cto i kind of have the upper hand on enforcing things uh, and my philosophy on this is i want to keep processes aligned to our internal team. The reason is, uh, I, I, this is actually a fight I had with the contributor. And the contributor was like, you guys are making the code base more complex. And I was like, do you rather have a simpler code base which you can contribute to, or a much more stabler app? Right? For me, it's about the correctness as a developer tool. Right? A lot of people rely on us. If Hopscotch actually doesn't work for you for a reason, you might not cover, never come back to Hopscotch. Right? So we want to keep you in, and for that, we, want to, we try to make sure through our internal processes that we catch errors as early as possible. Better than that is make errors impossible to represent. Uh, so for that, we had to do some sacrifices in readability or whatever. As long as the app is stable, that's my thing. And creative freedom is a major problem for uh, like an, uh, an application which is built on open source. Um, I would just basically the same thing. Doing the right things take time. We have reasons for it. We never like deny a PR or something just based on things. We say, OK, either we have a better idea, or, uh, or this is the reason why you are wrong. Right? Bring into the perspective. Usually, people always try to do the right thing, but um, might be misguided or misinformed. Right? Uh, usually, what we see, this is actually something we see from the internal team as well, is uh, they might miss this one minor edge case, right? That's usually what we see in contributors as well, to a degree. So that is just about uh, uh, communicating that, OK, hey, there is this issue over there. Can you either resolve it, or let's just scrap the PR start from the beginning? Right, I hope it answers your question. Any more? OK. 
Okay. I guess everyone wants the tea. Okay. Okay, then uh, thank you guys for listening. <laughs>